to start. So if you guys got any questions, you can unmute yourself and then I'll be able to hear you or Jamie will be able to hear you. But basically what we're going to talk about today is pregame routine. So I'm assuming all you guys that are in this is, are playing at a high, pretty high level or you guys were considered elite. So if you don't have a pregame routine already, you need one. So this is something that this might help you develop your own. But the one thing about a pregame routine is, and you can see I wrote it up here, is that this is not a warm up. This is not, when we talk about pregame routine, this isn't something that when you get to the rink just begins. This is something that happens 24 hours before a game. The dinner that you have before you go to bed, getting a good night's sleep, making sure that you're drinking enough water and there's hydration. When it comes to hydration and dinner, we'll kind of get in that later on. That's Jamie's thing. That's not my thing. I played on Big Macs and Snickers bars, so I'm not the one to talk about nutrition. But understand that when we talk about pregame routine, this is not about when you get to the rink. This is about the routine leading up and 24 hours before. So the reason we have a pregame routine is because we need to find our optimal performance state. Now, this isn't something that I made up. I'm stealing this from people that are much smarter than I am. This is sports psychology stuff. So optimal performance state, what is that? That it's the mindset that we best associate our performance with. So when you guys play a game or you guys have that feeling of being ready to play a game, that, and, and then you play well, it's that feeling that your body can kind of understand and recognize. And that is now your optimal performance state. So something about the optimal performance state is what we want is it, we want it to be repeatable, which is down here. Okay. This is something that we should be able to do every day and re and repeat that feeling because what that feeling does is it gives us confidence, right? So everybody, when you guys have a really good game, a lot of times there's guys that like before the game, you're like, Oh, I don't feel, I don't feel it. I don't feel like I'm going to perform well. And then you go out and you play really well. Just because you might not physically feel like you're ready to go. That doesn't mean your brain is not ready to go. And, the pregame routine is more about getting that mind body connection than it is just about the physical feeling of you getting ready to play the game. So does anybody got any questions about this before we kind of move on? Before you ask a question, it's the optimal state. You also, you might know it also as a flow state. And that's basically when you're releasing a group of chemicals in your brain that help you focus. So we talk about slowing the game down, but that actual, there's an actual chemical process where our brains slow the game down. You might remember it from, you know, if you think about your best game and you're like, wow, like that puck was going so slow or the puck appeared so big. That's what we're trying to recreate every single, it's actually every single game, but every single practice getting us into that flow state. And one more thing to add on, to this whole process of finding your routine is you want to find the minimal effective dose and what the, and for those that have taken you know chemistry or biology in high school the minimal effective dose is it's the, the least amount of work to get the most amount of effort and a lot of a lot of times goalies and my i had this problem when i played and it was it was horrible was especially when i got to the rink but everything leading up to the rink was too much and it was actually exhausting. And I was put so much effort in making sure that my, my routine was exact and my routine was so long. And if I explain it to you, it would take about an hour to explain it all. And by the time that was all done, I was mentally exhausted for the games. So you want to try to find and do the least amount of work that's going to get you ready in that flow state every time. And you, so you don't want to have this long drawn out pregame routine Take the things we're going to talk to you about in this lesson, tweak it yourself, find what works, but keep it as minimal as possible. So I, you know what, I'll write in here flow state because I've heard that too, but I've always used kind of OPS. So we can call it basically means the exact same thing. Uh, but consistent mental preparation leads to consistent physical performance. And everybody in this chat, we, we all want to be number one goalies, whether that's at AAA, whether that's at, division one college, whether that's junior a or whether it's you're playing anywhere, you want to be the number one guy. And the difference between a number one goalie and a number two goalie is their ability to consistently put out the same performance. And that starts with finding and being able to find and, and repeat that optimal performance state or that flow state. So these are the kind of the three things that are going to help you find this state. So we have a positive mental plan. 
It's what are you going to focus on? Because we're not thinking about the outcome or the stats. I remember when I played back in a long time ago, right? I haven't played in a long time. But when I played, if I got through the first period and I had 10 shots, I was already kind of calculating what my save percentage for the year was going to be before the game was even over. Or if I gave up two goals early in the game, I was already calculating, okay, I can't give up another goal because if I give up three, this is what my GAA is going to be. So my mental, my mental awareness or my mental acuity was not sharp. I had my mind was kind of wandering all over the place and I struggled badly with consistency. And that's one of the reasons why I was focusing on stats or the outcome, winning the game or losing the game rather than where my feet are. And this is a phrase that I learned from our sports psychologist that you guys, a lot of you guys have talked to Wade is where are my feet? So when you're in the game and you start feeling your, your brain wander, all you got to do is kind of say to yourself, where are my feet? You look down, your feet are in the crease. That's where you got to now click back to kind of finding and being able to repeat this optimal performance state again. Does that make sense to everybody? Good. Nobody say nothing. So I'm going to assume that's everybody's got that. Okay. The other thing is confidence. That flow state or that repeatable feeling is going to lead you to confidence. Everybody that I've kind of worked with kind of has heard this victory loves preparation. That was kind of my saying that I used for a long time because, and you've heard Albo say this, Albo's a big mindset guy is when you do this and you get to this position, it's going to give you the confidence to physically perform well, because you know, you've, you, you know that you've put in the work and you know that you've got to that mental state and that you're ready to go. And this is just one part about our pregame routine. This is a big part of how we develop our pregame routine, which we're going to go into next. But this is, this is important for you guys to understand. And this is important for you guys to learn because nobody in this room or nobody that you talk to, there's no coaches that can tell you how to get to this because it's 100% individual. You need to be able to develop this on your own. I, I can tell you this, these are the types of things that you want to do, but you have to kind of play and read and react off of your body and understand how to get yourself to this because this is about you doing it and not about us telling you how to do it. So what I would suggest, and I know, I know at least Harry has done this. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is, is, but get a notebook and you can kind of, it's, it's kind of like a documentation of your pregame routine and you can kind of go through your day and kind of keep notes about maybe what time you had a nap, if it's a pregame nap or how much water you drank or how much sleep you had and document kind of how your pregame routine went, how you felt before the game, and then how your performance was in that game. And if you document it over, say, six weeks or maybe 12 games, you're going to start to see trends where if you didn't do something, if you missed something, it kind of affected the way you felt or affected the way you play, and then also how that, how that effect in your optimal state led to your performance. Right? So, Harry, you want to talk about that? Because I know you've done that before. What I found was like sometimes when you do that, it can go both ways. Cause like sometimes when you're writing all this stuff down and you're thinking about too much, then not actually the things that you're doing are affecting your performance, but just the way that you're mentally approaching it is like, not that these things contribute so much, but it should just be like, I'm going to go out and play. Then afterwards I'll think about this. And that's what I found to be the most successful was when I wasn't thinking about what I was doing until afterwards when I, checked out the results so that's that goes back to our individual pregame routines that you when you did this you felt that it was kind of going back to what jamie said that it was exhausting you mentally so you made the change and just did it after yeah and that's something that you had to learn right yeah for sure anybody else have anything jamie daniel you want anything you want to add anything to this I was for those just of you guys that don't know who Daniel is Dan. Dan played in BC. He's going to RIT to play Division One. So he joined us this week. He, this is his first Zoom call with us. So feel free to jump in, Dan, if you want to say anything. I guess like my pregame routine, like just doing it like 24 hours prior, like it's something like I started like when I was playing AAA and like every year I kind of added things to it. And every year it kind of changes because playing on different teams like Chilwak, Wenatchee, they have like different game day schedules, like different pregames. So you kind of just got to work around that. And like at the start, you kind of got to like test things out. And then, you know, then you see what works kind of thing. That's what I kind of did. Well, I'm glad Shadard brought up about adding things too, because this will, this will kind of circle back to our, what I talked about at the start is it's good to experiment. It's good to add things, but 
you don't want to add too much. And for myself, I would, have, I had my set routine that I had since I was 16 years old that I used for 11 years. And the only thing that changed in that whole routine was I would add things. And the problem was, is if you play hockey long enough and you add things every year, eventually your routine becomes so long that it becomes exhausting and sometimes daunting. So if you're going to look to add things, also don't be afraid to take things out and to kind of play around with it, especially for you younger goalies. Um, now is the time to figure out what works and what doesn't, because when you get older and if you're superstitious or your habits, or you just find what works for you, it's much more difficult to change. Good. So you guys are definitely hitting on the next part is how it's very individual. Okay. And Harry, Danny, Philly all hit on this self-awareness if we talk about pre-game routine and we and we want to now compare Mark andre Fleury with Braden Holpe so how does him and Fleury how do they differ in terms of their self-awareness and their arousal level because the biggest thing too is you need to know yourself Fleury Holpe very different people when we think about Fleury what's some of the stuff that we see that he does before games relaxed and happy he's relaxed happy what else he seems like excited. Yeah, excited. Okay. How about you see him do cartwheels? Everybody seen that? He does cartwheels, right? He does chest bumps. There right? seems there's to be a, there's very little structure. Very well. The, that's what we see, right? We, we see, don't. We don't we know. See, yeah, we see. Yeah, what he presents right. to us is that there's less structure, but uh, we don't know what he's doing behind the scenes. But just in terms of his arousal level and excitement. Right. There's a, there's a pretty good one on YouTube that I saw yesterday where he's actually on the, on at center ice chirping Ovechkin during uh, a playoff game, squirting water at him. Okay. Laugh, when laughing. we think about Holpe laughing, right. When we think about Holpe, we think like stoic, very straight face, very serious, not laughing by himself. Uh, he has a towel over his head, right. He finds quiet, dark rooms. So it's very – they're very different in the way they terms that these two guys playing possibly two Hall of Famers, two Stanley Cup champions, uh, Vesna. I don't know if Fleury's got a Vesna trophy. He might by the end of his career. But two guys that are definitely, in my opinion, Hall of Fame goalies, how very different they act before a game. And what, they ha what they've done over their course of their career is – they have self-awareness and they realize what they need to do in terms of their preparation to play their best. You need to do whatever you need to do and be self-aware to find that optimal state. And if it's, if it's more like flurry, if that's what gets you ready to play the game, then that's what gets you ready to play the game. If it's, you want to be by yourself, if you don't want to talk to anybody, if you turn kind of the world off and you get in your own head, then that's what you have to do. There is no right or wrong way. Right. And that's the biggest thing I want you guys to understand is that it is a hundred percent individual on how you prepare and it's on you to figure out what works best for you. I was just going to say in sports psychology, there's something called the anxiety arousal curve. And I don't have a whiteboard here to draw it. So I guess you know, look at my hands, but we've all seen graphs that meet in the middle. Obviously this would be the highest, this would be the lowest. And what you have is you have your anxiety. And if your anxiety gets too high, you can't perform. This is when you're nervous, you know, you can't sleep the night before. There are guys that throw up between before games. That's how nervous they are. And if your nerves are too high, you're not going to be able to perform. But if your nerves are too low, like you just don't care. This game is a nothing game. You're just here to be here. Chances are you're not going to perform well either. The same goes with arousal. If you're not excited to play or you get too excited to play and you're way up here, your thoughts are going to be all over the place. It's hard to stay focused and you're not going to play well. And the reverse is if you're not very excited and it's another just whatever game, you're going to, you're going to struggle to find that focus. And we've all been there. And with the anxiety arousal curve is you want to meet somewhere in the middle where your, anx your anxiety isn't too high and your arousal isn't too high. And so when those connect, that's where you get that optimal state or that flow state where you have just the right amount of nerves, just the right amount of excitement to get you and trigger those endorphins in your brain. And that's going to put you in the optimal state. Uh, one thing I'll say about uh, anxiety or nerves or jitters or excitement, 
uh, your body cannot distinguish between anxiety and excitement. It's the same emotion. So when you are feeling anxious, you're also feeling your, your body doesn't know if you're anxious or if you're excited. It, it senses it as the same as the same thing. So you might feel like, oh, I'm really, really nervous. But your body can also think of that as excitement. You're excited to play. So it's a perfect thing that Jamie said is you got to be able to control the level of arousal. And that's something like we go back to individual. You guys got to learn how to do that on your own. So because this is so individual, there's no laws or rules around your pregame routine. But just in terms of what, there's two things I think that should be included in all pregame routines. Okay. Number one is visualization. Okay. Everybody knows what visualization is. Everybody has done visualization. Whether you think you have or you haven't, if, you, if you're sitting on the couch and you are thinking about a guy shooting and you catching a puck, that's visualization. You are constantly always practicing it. So right now, me just saying you sitting on the couch and catching a puck, everybody just thought about that. You've now practiced visualization. So when we talk about it in terms of visualization, there's a couple things that I think are very important when we talk about pregame visualization is number one, positive. Okay. Positive outcomes. And I know this because in my head, when I played those negative visualization cues would pop in. I would oh. think about me making maybe a breakaway save or beating a pass in my feet and then getting a belly trap. And then things would creep into my head where a guy would beat me high far side or a guy would beat me on a rebound. You need to practice this. You need to practice and train your brain to block out those negative, those negative outcomes and only think about that positive visualization. And I'm sure everybody here who's done visualizations have had some of those negative thoughts creep in. You got to learn to now push those out. But understand that you're going to get scored on, right? So if you do have a hard time keeping only positives and you do have those mental or sorry, those negative thoughts creep in your head, now you can turn that into a positive. And you can take those negative kind of emotions and visualizations and then work on kind of that reset. So after you get scored on, if you can't keep those at your head, then practice positive resetting so that you're ready to go after a game. Because that is going to help you after, after a goal in the game also. Because what happens is the more we work on visualization, the more things become familiar. So I don't want you guys, when we do visualization, what I would recommend is we, we don't want to just visualize stopping pucks, okay? We also want to visualize situations. So power plays or three on twos. You want to visualize those things developing. Maybe they don't even result in a shot or a save, but when you're sitting at home and you're preparing, the more you can visualize different things that will happen in the game consistently, like corner cycles or going D to D or dump-ins and communicating with your defenseman. The more you visualize those, the more your brain is becoming familiar with those and the easier it is going to be able to adapt and react during the game. Good. So the second part, other than visualization, and like I, we said before, this should happen 24 hours before. So what a really, what a really good kind of tip I, I kind of tell a lot of guys to do is the night before a game, maybe watch, watch a hockey game right? Whether it's an NHL game or an OHL game or something, or watch some highlights or even watch some of your highlights, right? If you're in junior, you got hockey TV. So if you're playing, say Harry's playing, he played for Oakville last year. If you guys are playing Burlington, you can watch maybe two or three of Burlington's power plays the night before a game. That's going to kind of help you with visualization, getting familiar. And you can do that before because the visualization can start 24 hours before, just like our pregame routine starts 24 hours before. Other than visualization, and Jamie's going to take this over, is I think the second most important part, maybe the most important is up to, that's up for debate or up to uh, personal preference, is pregame nutrition. So I have no input on this, so I'm going to stop talking. Just like visualization and all these things are individual to your own needs, so is nutrition. So it's incredibly difficult for me to just come in and be like, yes, breakfast, you need this, 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 lunch, this, 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 and do this, this, this. There's certain things that you can do that are certain general statements I can make that are going to work for everybody. But I suggest that if you really want to have a more serious nutrition plan or just you have questions about it, you can reach out to me individually through my Instagram, Victoria Nutrition, and we can talk about this stuff. 
And again, here's a, just a shameless plug is I have a hockey player nutrition manual coming out and I break down in season, off season nutrition, pregame nutrition, all these things. So the key that we want to focus on when it comes to nutrition is we need to make sure we have enough energy to perform. And by energy, I mean calories. And this is starting the day, the day or two before a game. So from the, definitely from the night before, you want to make sure you get some good protein, some chicken, fish, beef, uh, mix that with some carbs. Could be anything from rice, quinoa, a couple of good slices of bread with some fats, some avocado, oil, nuts, like all these things. And then when it comes to game time, same thing. So you might develop that part of your routine is exactly what you eat. For me, every game day morning, I was having two pieces of avocado toast, four eggs, and oatmeal. And if you pregame skate, you're going to have to eat more than if you don't pregame skate. That will carry you into lunch. Same thing. You want to make sure you're getting your proteins, carbs, and fats at lunch. And then depending on what time you guys play, for those of you that are in school, if you eat again before the game, this is where it gets a little tricky because you don't want to eat too much. Because if you eat too much before a game, you're going to feel heavy and slow and sluggish or nauseous, and you're not going to feel good. And that's going to be distracting. And it's going to be very difficult to get into that flow state. So between periods, eat some, eat some simple sugars, digest quickly. Uh, if you're a younger goalie and you don't get um, a, sorry, uh, a Zamboni break, then once you go to the bench between periods, ask your coach for a squirt or two of Gatorade because Gatorade contains some simple sugars and that's going to help give you a little bit of immediate fuel and a little bit of energy so that you don't run out of gas during the game. And then, so I'm going to circle all the way back to 24 hours before the game where we talk about hydration. And the best way to stay hydrated is to sip on a water bottle just throughout the day. The one thing I recommend is that before a game, you do have some sort of electrolyte beverage and a low sugar electrolyte beverage. You can find it anywhere, or you can just put some salt and water with a little bit of lime juice. Perfect. You're ready to go. That's really it. I mean, it's, it's, I can't give you guys detailed numbers right now because it's quick and there's no one size fits all, but I do recommend if you're interested, reach out to me and we can get something a little more personal, a little more detail uh, oriented that's gonna work for you. Anyone have any questions regarding kind of nutrition or hydration leading up to a game? You no, know, like for me, sometimes like I would like to have a coffee, like when I'm going to the rink, like before a game, can you get on something about like that? Like if that's a good thing or not a good thing? Yeah, so caffeine itself is a stimulant and so I, Caffeine, I classify as a supplement. And for right now, we don't really need to get too much into supplementing for performance because that's a whole other episode on itself. But, you know, Frankie's an older guy. Frankie's 27 years old. I mean, younger guys, you definitely don't really need caffeine or the caffeine from energy drinks or this and that because, you know, you're young and you don't need that. Usually you have enough energy. But for older guys like us where our bodies, you know, it's a lot to get these things going. So caffeine can be a little bit of a stimulant. Um, one thing, the things I'd recommend about caffeine is don't exceed too much. So if you're having three or four cups of coffee before a game, or sometimes even like an energy drink, like a monster contains like 300 milligrams of caffeine. Like this is so much. You're, it's going to cause you to spike and your energy levels are going to go up and what comes up must come back down. So even those drinks, like five hour energy, like steady, steady energy, don't crash. It's a lie. You can't have, be stimulated and not come back down because it, it breaks all the laws of physics. So if you're going to use caffeine as a supplement for your game, whether that's straight coffee or an energy drink or through a pre-workout, you want to have it about 30 minutes before you play. How much caffeine... It's hard to say, but at least one, one to two cups of coffee should do the trick. That ends up being about like 100 to 120 milligrams of caffeine. Nothing too crazy. It's dealer's choice. If you want to have it, it's up to you. If you don't, it's not necessary. But don't go overboard. If you're going to have an energy drink, look at the ingredients. Try not to exceed over 200 milligrams before a game or else it's too much and it'll be hard to focus. 
Hope, does that answer your question, Frankie? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Anyone else have any uh, nutrition or hydration questions? Hey, one, Jamie. Yeah. What do you think like the best time to like a pregame meal at? Like more like some of my nutritionists and would actually say like they would say like three o'clock for like a seven o'clock game, but some like say like one thirty. So I get there's no there's no perfect time. Uh, it's whatever works best for you. So like I said before, you don't want to be too full and you don't want to be too hungry. And so you know your body, you know what's going to fill you up, you know what foods are going to fill you up and how much is going to fill you up and when you should eat that. So I can only speak for myself, but I like to have a big meal after pregame skate before my nap. And then I would have a small snack when I woke up a snack at the rink and snacks between periods. There is no perfect time. The only thing I would suggest is try not to eat a massive meal right before. So if you have to get, if you get to the rink at four o'clock, don't have a huge meal at like three or three thirty because it might be a little too much. I would say have smaller, smaller meals closer to the closer to when you arrive at the rink, bigger meals. Um, if you're eating much earlier to when you arrive. That goes back to our kind of self-awareness. And if you guys, I'm, I'm a big on taking notes and learning yourselves and trying to understand what makes you perform well and what will hinder you. So if you keep track of that and you'll see kind of after a while, you'll see what, what kind of works for you best. And then you kind of stay on that course. We are moving on. Okay. So after that, after we got nutrition and we got visualization, after that's a hundred percent on you guys. So everybody take their, turn their mics off mute. Because now we're just going to kind of spitball and throw some stuff out there. So uh, now if, if, as we get to the closer to the game and we want to talk about maybe warm-ups. Uh, so let's start throwing some stuff out there. What's some stuff that you guys do that we'll just throw it on the board here? Roll out. Okay, so what else? What else? Stretch. Stretch. And I. Uh, and I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next week, everybody wear headphones so we don't hear this echoing. So when we do hand-eye, is that Cookie that said that? Uh, I was not. Okay, who said hand-eye? That, Just that was Demers. Talking about. Oh, Demers, what do you, what do, you do for your hand-eye? Juggling. Uh, I have like those beads and like nut thing to focus the eyes. Yeah, we got to turn the bikes off unless you're talking. It's, there's too much... Okay, turn your yeah, mic yeah. off unless you're talking then. Yeah. Next week, bring headphones. What else we got? Uh, throwing like ball off the wall, like closer than six ball feet. Off the wall. Okay, good. Somebody else give me something else. So we got rolling out, we got stretching. What else? Uh, right. Sure, everybody. Good. Music. Dynamic. So let's let's go dynamic first. Danny, go. What do you got for that? Um, I got some like glute activation stuff. I just think so, so I can feel like all my muscles kind of like. It's a fun way to say butt. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Um, you got some like jumping, like some yeah, plyometrics. Like, is, like single leg, like skater. Um, what are those called? Nick pushing side to side. Yeah. So single leg, just we'll put single Scare. leg. Ups. Yeah. Drills. Okay, good. So that's important. Let's get the body ready, right? Because remember, it's all about mind body connection. So if we're doing the visualization. And we're getting the mind ready. We got to make sure we get the body ready. Music. I'm sure everybody listens to music, right? Guys throw headphones in. Or if you're not, if, if you're not a headphone guy, you're probably in your in your dress room and guys probably have some music going on. So finding the right type of music that gets you to your right, your your arousal level. Can't spell right now. Right? So whether it's you're listening to country, which might make you kind of happy, right? Or you're listening to Die Artist Murder, like Jamie <laughs> listens to, which is going to make you angry, right? That's about individual, knowing the level of arousal that you need to get to, okay? What else? Give me some of the younger guys. Hayden, what do you got? Um, visualization. Okay. We already talked about the visualization. So what do you like to do for visualization, Hayden? Um, just picture me making saves. Good. Making saves. Cuff, what do you got? Uh, a lot of guys are doing the breathing stuff, like those breathing technique things. Breathing is going to help you calm yourself down. If, you, if you're a guy that needs to be calm to play, so 
So there's breathing exercises. That's a good one. If you, uh, if you need to calm yourself down, go like guys that get nervous and stuff, Google box breathing. Uh, it's a Navy SEAL technique. It's basically you breathe, you inhale for four seconds, then you hold that breath inside for four seconds, then you exhale for four, you hold that exhale so you have no air in your lungs for four seconds, and you just do that continuously, and that helps kind of calm you down and relax. And if it works for Navy SEALs, it would work for us. Thanks, Good. That. What's up? Yeah. No, yeah. Um, I found like doing that box breathing thing, it would also help with when negative thoughts got into my head. If I would just focus on in for four, holding for four, out for four, whatever, I'd find if I ever thought about something like negative throughout the game, even before the game too, if I'm visualizing, then it would just kind of clear my mind and I could get right back into it sort of thing. Perfect. That's a, that's a good point. Shutter. Like this box breathing thing is something you can do in the game. It could be, it could help you with your goal reset. Awesome point. Shutter. Uh, Harris, you got anything? McGovern cookie. I got, I got some. Um, oh, we got cookie. Yeah, I think I usually just think about the, the threats on the other team, like a pre-scout, what guys, what hands they are, where they usually like to shoot, like what their power play setup is. Good. No, I was going to say the same thing. Like, I usually watch, like, video on, like, an iPad of the other team to see, like, what their power play is and, like, what their whole strategy is type of thing. This part is also 100% individual. There are guys that – there are guys that want to know, right, so that they can anticipate. And then there's guys that just, like, yeah, I don't want to know anything. I just want to react. Right. So that's something that as a goalie and as you guys get to higher levels are going to have to learn about yourselves. There's just but, some guys, and even this goes for shooters too. Some guys will come to me if I'm coaching a team, be like, Boosh, where am I shooting on this guy? And then there'll be other guys like, yeah, don't tell me. I just want to do it. I want my instincts to kick it. So this is something that is, that's good that those two guys are doing this, but don't feel, especially minor hockey guys, like it's tough to get some video on if you're playing minor hockey, but this is individual. You might like it. You might not like it. And that's totally okay. Anything else we want to add to this? Um, you can also do like tension to release. So like you squeeze like a certain like muscle group and then you release it and it makes you feel like um, that muscle group like relaxed and like it makes it more like, I don't know, like you move better in those different muscle groups. So this can kind of go into like the physical, this wouldn't be a dynamic one, but this could be in like the kind of that physical readiness part. The very least thing you the very, let me guess the very least thing you can do when it comes to your warm up as well is just get the blood going and just get warm because that's going to prevent injury and all these things like physical parts are part of that. But even if you part of your routine is not, you know, glute activation and muscle release or this stretch or that stretch, you need to get your body moving because you can't go into the net cold physically and mentally. You can't do that because you can't perform just, you can't, no one, no one just gets shot out of a cannon and is ready to go. You have to be prepared. The first thing I would do as soon as I got to the rink, I would change. And I would walk around the entire arena. Like I would walk right along the boards. I was looking for imperfections in the boards. I was looking at the glass, um, just little things like that. But that was kind of helping me. And I was like the first thing that kind of clicked my head into, okay, it's time to really get ready for puck drop is just a simple walk. And you see guys like there's videos of Hellebuck and all guys in the NHL, they sitting on the bench by themselves doing their eyes. And you're just looking at the rink, getting that familiarity because that's what comes back to that, that, is if you were visually seeing the arena and seeing the lights and seeing the, the lines on the ice, that's already getting you familiar to how the game is going to get played, which is going to make you be able to kind of react quicker and be and ready, right? So that's just something that I did that somebody might want to do. Um, if guys don't want to do that, that's cool. So I'm just going to add that. Charlotte, you got anything for us? Uh, I like to jump rope a little bit. Okay, so we can put that in the dynamic. So jump rope. Is uh, did Noah Cavallaro, did you guys did you ever get on here, Noah? Yeah, I did. I'm here. Okay, would you want to add something to this? Uh, I like to pray before a game sometimes. Okay, just... that's a good one. So praying. And then I like to separate myself from, like, the rest of the team. Just, like, get in my head and think about stuff, like, about so the game. So quiet. Who had a question? Uh, Someone had a question. Steve has a question. Um, Steve. I, like, yeah. Uh, would oh, you Steven. recommend 
yoga or mobility before a game? If you want to do yoga before, if that helps you get your mind in the right, in, into the right mindset, then there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, it just kind of helps me slow things down. And you know what? Then if that's what you want to do, then I think that's – it's obvious. Then do it. Add it in, right? Because there is, there is no right or wrong way. When we talk about nutrition, uh, Cookie, what's your pregame meal? Are you talking about, like, the whole day or just one? No, just what is your, what is your go-to pregame meal? <clears throat> uh, pizza sub from Subway. <laughs> pizza sub from Subway. I thought it wasn't at Chicken Nuggets at one point. <clears throat> Oh my God. Yeah. It so was. It was. So it's not like, that's not something that we're going to recommend for Benny or Dan Chenard, the two guys on my screen. That's not something we're going to recommend for those guys. But if having a pizza sub from Subway is what gets Cookie ready and mentally prepared, then that's what he's going to have. And that's what he should have because Cookie led the, led the province in numbers this year, having pizza subs and chicken fingers. So it worked. <laughs> what, yep. uh, what about Reed? Reed Gates, what do we want to add to this? Uh, I just try to, like, before the game, I'll let myself, like, think about just literally anything. And then about 20 minutes, so, like, when I'm fully dressed, I try to just, like, zone everything out and just dial in on the game. Okay, good. Where's my girl Shannon? I, like, throw a ball, I stretch. And then I get in the room, and then when the coaches are talking, I just zone everything out. So how many of you guys do so the turtle? You guys, do you guys the know turtle. what the turtle? Okay, Shannon, turtle. Mute Shannon, mute me now. Mute me now. Mute your headphones or your mic, Shannon. How many of you guys do the turtle? You guys know what the turtle is, right? Where you sit and you bring your shoulder pads and you kind of put your head down in your shoulder pads so you can't see anything, right? That James Reimer has a pretty good video on YouTube talking about how that's his mental cue to click in. Is as soon as he gets his jersey on, he turtles for a couple minutes, and that's when his brain really kind of dials in. So. There's lots of stuff on this wall. We talked about lots of stuff. Uh, we talked about optimal performance state or flow state, right? Uh, me and Jamie call it different things, but it's basically the same thing. You guys have to find out how to get to your optimal training or so your optimal optical mental state. That's individual. We can't help you with that. Uh, we gave you guys some ideas on what might help you get ready for a game, but and, and some of the things that might help you, you should include in your pregame routine but it's on you guys to develop something. It's on you guys to be self-aware enough to know whether or not it works. So if we go back and we talk about Marc-Andre Fleury and Braden Holpe, two guys that play very different games, they have very different outward emotion before a game, but two guys that are Hall of Fames. So there is no right or wrong way. You guys need to be self-aware, understand how you prepare for a game, and then it's on you guys to do it. It's not on your parents to do it for you. The biggest thing I see is, oh, I couldn't get my pregame routine in because we were late to the rink. But how does that affect what you did the night before? Because there's a, a pregame routine starts 24 hours before. You cannot also, this is, this, we should end on this, is you can't be so rigid in this that if one thing goes wrong or one thing isn't perfect in your, in your routine, that it now negatively affects your performance. Right? If you break a skate lace when you're tying your left skate because your skate lace has to, or your left skate has to go first, that lace breaks. You can't be like, oh, I'm going to give up three tonight. I'm going to get yanked because that's just that mean that means you're too you're too invested and too rigid in your routine. Just because you break a skate lace, it doesn't mean you're going to get scored on three times in the first five minutes. There there is no correlation to that. So don't be so. Don't be so kind of mentally weak and invested in this that it has to be perfect every time. Because when you play junior or you play college, you might have a, you might have a flat tire on a bus. If you're playing the coast, you're probably pushing the bus half the time, right? If, so you, you have to be able to be strong enough mentally and understand that it doesn't have to be the perfect every single time. Does that make sense? I kind of stumbled around my words there. Yeah, makes, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I say something, Bush? Yes, please. Uh, like some of the guys weren't here for this, but when uh, Mark Byzantine used to like comment a lot and talk about like his career, he'd talk about playing in the coast, getting to the rink after the bus broke down, ten minutes before warm ups, not being able to do his routine, eating like garbage food. But the one thing you told me is that 
like time doesn't make saves you make saves so really all that all that it comes down to is wanting to make the saves even though maybe your pregame routine wasn't done all the way through that's a good line cookie i'm gonna write that down good anybody got anything final to add we kind of went over time a little bit but i think there's some good stuff here other than that get out of here i'm going to watch the draft <laughs>